is inappropriate for all ages right here on gaming division this is the play spot i am camerai and i'm sid cam and this is a show where i ask sid to marry me and she says uh ask me again later wow you really i thought you took like improv classes and stuff <laughs> i thought i could keep you on your toes and like you'd be fine that was supposed to be a response it's like an eight ball it's one of the three actual <laughs> legitimate responses. Try again later. Yeah. See, if you had said something like, uh, uh, like, outcome unclear or something, I could have got behind that. Oh, all right. Am I on a delay? I can't tell. Um, that's really concerning because I haven't had that issue before. Hopefully I'm not too delayed here. I just my video looks really choppy compared to yours, and it shouldn't. Um, so I'm gonna try to fix that. Uh, did you get the show notes? You did not get the show notes. Uh, it's out on Drive if you want to pull them up. Um, but the way I want to start out the show now is talking about um, adding a segment about like non-gaming gaming like. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about the stuff we played and whatnot, but I want to talk about stuff like that's in the media and like shows we watch. Um, and uh, Kevin actually kind of helped push me towards towards this because uh, we started talking about LARPs. But um, of course, the big ones that I follow uh, right now are Dominions of, Dominion of Esalen, which is live uh, after this show. Uh, it's uh, about a three hours of live D&D campaigning. So if you like that, go watch that. Um, they, of course, uh, Weirdlings do War and Scarlet as well. Uh, they're on a weird delay because they lost the audio for an episode. Oh, so are these all on Weirdlings' channel? Yeah, so if you go over to youtube.com slash the Weirdlings, uh, you can find it there. Um, and they are live on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I think on Twitch they're just Weirdlings. Um, and then Brandon, the DM from War and Scarlet, also does a thing called Twilight Chorus. Um, that is uh, pretty entertaining. Those those good bunch of guys. Uh, but Sid, you're you're more familiar with Geek and Sundry, right? I am. Yes. Uh, they do two shows that uh, I find no well. Tabletop is my big show there, but it's not a uh, what's the word? Oh, it's not current. It's 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 like on hiatus. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. That's kind of the same with, um, I mean, my personal favorite on their channel, which would have to be Spellslingers, obviously. Oh, God. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not be frozen on the on the camera. We'll, we'll, I'm going to try to get that back there. Oh, Look, okay, now. There we go. Caught up. Is my speed normal? Yes. Hopefully it'll... That's actually better. Yeah, okay. It, I can't. apparently can't really do 10, 1080p. I can do 720p. At 1080p quality, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, but uh, their show LARPs wrapped up recently, and oh my god! Like there are movies and things where I go, "That's the perfect ending." I, 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 they should never have changed a thing. LARPs has like has that for the the, the second end of the second season. Um, you are you familiar with what LARPs are, Sid? I am the live action role playing. Uh, there are a couple good movies out there, like Role Models, for instance, uh, yes. that, that would help explain in an extremist perspective what it is. And if you like anything dealing with D&D &D or role-playing games, LARPs is a very uh, short, concise way of looking into the lives of people who LARP. Mm -hmm. um, and so not only do you have the, like, all the, the component of all the characters who are real people in that world, but you have the story of the LARP going on and the the bit one of the big things about it is them trying to identify themselves in game and find their persons and they really r play with that and wrap it up really well in the end of the, the second season so uh, nice it's it's really neat how it goes and i, I can't talk about it because it'll spoil it because i want people to go watch it is this um it's like reunions Reunions? Are you talking about the um, video game? Never mind. Reunion? No, no. Actually, I was just looking at their website and I saw something called Reunions Critical Role RPG Show. Now, Critical Role is their live action, 
uh, their live D&D stream um, that has gotten oh. a lot better in quality since I stopped watching because I just fell behind because uh, I'm mm. way behind in a lot of things I want to be. Um, but one day, one day I'll catch up because they do go to VOD or Video On Demand. Uh, there's no point saying VOD, you say VOD or Video On Demand, right? Basically. Yeah. Okay. And then Cooptitude, of course, um, which I loved seeing them play uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time because that is a fantastic game. You have no idea how much it kills me. You and I can't play that together. Why not? Does uh, it have to be, like, in person? Yeah, it's it's ca it's defined as couch co-op. Oh. Uh. Um, and, oh, they have a new one up that I didn't know about. Uh, Shift Happens. Uh, apparently. I was just noticing that. Yeah, yep. so, I mean, it's good, it's fun. If you like Felicia Day uh, and Ryan, like, as personalities, that's what you watch it for. It's not for good gameplay. Um, but occasionally, like, you, you run into fun things, and they explore some things, like, uh, keep talking and nobody explodes. I was really impressed that they did that. <laughs> uh, that's something you and I could actually play together, because uh, you, it actually takes one person playing, one person talking. Oh, okay, uh, okay. If you're not familiar with that one, it's uh, it's it, you've got like a bomb in front of you, and you have to uh, go through these puzzles to disarm it. But I have to explain to you by reading a manual as if we're over uh, a walkie-talkie. Ooh, okay. Um, Wait, which one was that? No, uh, keep talking and nobody explodes. Oh, oh, oh. So nice. Maybe if you look into that and you really like it, um, we can actually get that one together and play because um, honestly that that does seem like a an interesting enough one um, that does sound pretty interesting then of course uh rooster teeth um i don't know if you noticed since this podcast was on last uh ruby the game came out are you familiar with ruby <clears throat> Okay, so Ruby is their anime that they came out with, created by Monty Um Rest in peace. Um, uh, fuck, I can't believe he's gone. But uh, Miles and Carrie especially are carrying the torch, and not only is the series just fantastic, but somebody made a fan video game out of it, and Rooster Teeth uh, ended up getting involved after a point to help make it a thing. Nice. Which is really cool of them. Uh, but it is a shitty game. Uh. Um... Part of the, the, the thing, the spectacle of Ruby is that there's these, the team, the main team, uh, Rose, Weiss, Blaine, and, and Yang, which is what spells out Ruby, um, they're special people in this universe, and every hunter or huntress is a unique personality. So, in the game, everyone in the game plays as one of the main four characters, and you mm. go around and you kill Grimm, which are the main bad guys. Um... They're like monsters of despair and things like that. Uh, so while that's a cool concept, in application, it does not look good. It doesn't seem to run very well. Uh, maybe I was just watching a beta version uh, playthrough, but there was like there's no music. Uh, the UI seems weak. Like it had just a lot of poor points to it. But it could be a cool thing if you add, if you take away the thing where you're one of the characters and you make your own character. If, oh. if you were your own hunter or huntress in the world, I think that would be really awesome. Uh, you can make a good MMO out of that. Nice. Uh, Sounds interesting, at least. Yeah. Um, now, what what we could do too? Now, I was thinking about this. I, I was sad that Rooster Teeth changed their. Or they have a podcast, a gaming podcast called The No, uh, and they used to have a game club that followed weekly afterwards. Um, but now they are doing it. Uh, monthly as a pre-taped show. Oh. Uh, theoretically, to give them more time to get their homework done. Because that makes sense. That's they're, smart. They're, they're busy people. Uh, but I, I liked it on a weekly basis. I was like, oh, what's the game of the week? Because um, I like that from uh, co the Co-Optional podcast. Co-Optional? Yeah, Co-Optional podcast. Um, mm -hmm. They go through weekly re releases and talk about them. Um, so it's like, oh, I should put that on my list. Uh, but they, they just, I don't know if you pulled up the notes or not, but I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to talk about all those games, but Zubinis okay. was the last one. It was the first one under the new format, um, which it seemed like it was really kind of like a mobile game almost, uh, like kind of a Lemmings game. Oh. 
Okay. Because you're supposed to sort out the different uh, Zumbinis. They want to segregate things and organize them or something. It's, it's very strange. But some of the ones they've done in the past are fate, Space Funeral, Guacamele, Fez, uh, which is a very interesting game that we could talk about probably for a while, but I don't like how it's programmed because it's programmed very clunky. It eats up an amazing amount of uh, memory and processing power to do so little at any point. <laughs> Uh, but you still have to track everything in 3D with a 2D format. So um, points for him for coming up with something so innovative. But uh, he's apparently a big dick. So um, on that, obviously, matters when it comes to enjoying games. Well, not the game <laughs> itself, but like you're like, oh, this is amazing. I wonder who made this. And then he's the guy who was on the internet saying, "Fuck the games industry." Uh, screw all this, I never want to deal with this again, it's like... Yeah, I guess that kind of turns people off to it a little bit. Yeah, because you don't want to support people that make problems in the industry, like, in general. Yeah. Um, but Dust and Elysian Tail, uh, I spent a magical three three hours uh, poorly recorded with that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to going back and replaying those three hours and finishing that game. It was It's, it's like a... Uh, uh, a Metroidvania style game, except uh, melee style. Oh. Um, and you're a, a like a wolf person. Like everyone's animals in that that world. Um, Interesting. And then Undertale. Tell me, you've been seeing Undertale around? No. I've been out of it, man. Under a rock more than me. Yeah. That's impressive. Um, so Undertale is basically like a. a an old style uh, RPG, turn-based RPG, where you actually have the option not to kill anyone. Like, that's Interesting. one of the big things. So, like, there are several different ways to play the game. Uh, uh, in the true pacifist mode is you actually have to play through the game twice without killing anybody. Then there's the genocide mode where you fight things and kill them off as normal. Uh, and everyone's reactions are different based on your actions. And unless you completely remove the game from your computer, it remembers when you try to restart and fix your things. If you're like, oh, I didn't want to kill that person because they're vital here, and you go back and start over, it'll remember and be like, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be a conversation being like, yeah, you could kill them. That might seem familiar. Oh. Like little things like that because it reads your old memory saves. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, it, it was a big hit. It's a really good one to watch people play. Okay, so okay. If you want to throw it on and uh, just watch a video game for a while, it's a good one. Nice. Um, speaking of, I'm hoping you have one to add to this after I, I hit these other ones. Um, Syrup in the Ultimate Suite. Oh my God, what a cute fucking game. Uh, and if you want a good voiceover for it, go over to youtube.com slash press heart to continue and find Dodgers, uh, cause she does great little voices for things. Uh, it really makes me not want to play the, the games themselves because I don't get her voiceover with it. Um, but it's called Syrup in the Ultimate Suite and it's all about this candy alchemist who comes to her lab one day and finds a, a living candy girl. Uh... <laughs> sitting there waiting to be her friend. Uh, hmm. And it's a choose-your-own-adventure type uh, visual novel. So it's not its not a game, like I would consider, uh, but it's its pretty good. Uh, I, and I'm a fan of visual novels, I just don't like calling them games. Yeah. I don't know if, you, if you're into those or not. Um, kind of like the more like storyline type games. Yeah, where it's it's like Walking Dead or like Telltale games. Where right, like, right. You just make choices. Yeah, um, I I like I like them pretty well. I haven't played a whole lot of them. There was one that I recently came across during the Steam Lunar Sales called uh, Firewatch. And yes, this is one that's been hitting the the industry. Pretty well. Yeah. Well, so. A lot of people um, talking about it. Yeah, I watched a playthrough of that for for a little while. Um, just kind of like the first beginning part of it, and the colors are just so vibrant, and um, the storyline's compelling. So that in itself is, I think, enough to make it enjoyable to to play. And you can burn down the forest, right? 
Maybe. I don't know. I didn't watch it for Spoilers. Fire. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Just kidding. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, just, I don't know how to, oh, I guess I could have typed it to you. You can shift, like, a couple inches to your left, I think. <laughs> no, other way. It's just the way it's centered. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the, our feed. Because it's, I mean, I could, I could watch the previews, but you're good, you're good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was watching you scoot on the feed. It's actually really funny. Um, okay, so, and then a big one, uh, that I can't believe you haven't heard of if you haven't, or you haven't watched, Until Dawn. That sounds kind of familiar. Oh my god, if, kind of funny, uh, youtube.com slash kind of funny, youtube.com slash press hard to continue, youtube.com slash Jesse Cox, uh, there's another one that I watched somewhere and I cannot, uh, Achievement Hunter, achievementhunter.com or youtube.com slash achievement hunter. If anyone you know of is playing Until Dawn, go watch it. Uh, I've watched like three or four playthroughs. It's super interesting watching people make these hectic decisions because not only is it a visual novel uh, where you have to pick choices and then people remember things, but they have these QEE events where it's like, don't move. And you have to hold the controller still. Um, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that eye widening is the correct answer, um, and so it's a horror. It's a horror movie. So there's a potential for everyone in the in the sh in the game to die, and there's potential for everyone in the game to to live to the very end. Curious. Yeah. So the branching, and they even start out explaining the butterfly effect. Oh, okay. Uh, so and there's clues you can get along the way, so you can try to piece together. And it's super interesting seeing people trying to guess what the story is. Or it's going to be, and then um, uh, uh, how to use the the totems, the the clues, the hints about the uh, the butterfly effects or whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's super super interesting, um, but uh, not nearly as interesting as Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler. Which, unfortunately, oh. TV, uh, Total Biscuit, uh, if you go over to YouTube.com slash Total Halibut, I think is where he's he's putting it up, uh, he's going to do a weekly Sunday uh, game of uh, Secret Hitler. Um, are you familiar with, like, Werewolf or Mafia? Yes. Okay. So Secret Hitler is kind of one of those games. Um, but the way it works is everyone is either a fascist, a, I'm going to say libertarian, but I don't remember what it's actually called. Um, or your Hitler, who is a fascist, but Hitler doesn't get to know who the other fascists are. Um, so he's kind of depowered. Um, so the whole game is based on passing these policies, and if you can get three fascist policies, or Hitler elected president, then uh, the game... Uh, the, then uh, Hitler, uh, the fascists win. Otherwise, the libertarians or whatever win. Uh, okay. So it's this social bluffing game. And I normally hate bluffing games, but I like this because it's not elimination. Because that's my biggest problem with bluffing games is where it's like, oh, I'm out. I'll sit here and watch this boring mess. Uh, <laughs> because if it's most bluffing games, if you're not in it, you don't care as much. Uh, yeah, but this is super exciting to watch and listen to. Um, so they're doing it over tabletop simulator because the game's not out yet. Oh, okay. Um, I think the kick. Which I did pick up, by the way. What? The tabletop simulator. Yay! I love Yay. you. Sam. I don't know if I told you today. Aww. I think I just cursed at you a lot. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I'm sorry for being late, even though I was on time. Kind of. We'll 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 discuss that because uh, I just brought it back down. Um, okay, but that's that's pretty much. Those are just games I want to talk about uh, or things to watch people play involving games uh, because I find super interest or things I found super interesting over the past couple months. Um, and of course, if you can find anyone, I don't believe I didn't mention it specifically, playing uh, Lovers in Endless Space. I think that's what it is. Lovers for in the space time or something. Uh, go watch that because it's it's fan fucking tastic. It really is. I love the people who made that game. Uh, 
Um, so, Sid, I think you have something uh, for us here. Spellslinger. Oh, really? You know what? Yep. We're, I'm going to add Spellslingers as a thing on there under Geek and Sundry, and you're going to fucking be in charge of that. <gasps> that sounds amazing! I would love to do that. Just whenever it comes back up again. I just don't know when. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, because it's not going at the moment. But, um, yes! It's time for Minute in Magic! I just, I just imagine there being, you know, like, like words that popped up each time I was like, blah, blah, blah. If I can but get a soundboard eventually, I want to do that. <laughs> so I can at least give you a sound effect with it. Yes! <sighs> so, there's an, uh, I don't know entirely, like, how new this whole play concept is um, in Magic the Gathering, but it was something that was just recently pres presented to me, and it's called Tiny Commanders. And I've heard I guess, of it. yes, so it's um, fifty cards in a deck instead of hundred, like regular commander. Is it still singleton? Singleton, as in I just heard about this today, by the way. So well, no, uh, commander is normally singleton, isn't it? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, where you can only have one of a card in the deck. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. As far as I know, yes. Um, and then oh. They fight each other. They, they sling spells. I was... Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> um, Part of me but just yeah, wants so, to make you big for this. <laughs> so yeah, 50 cards. Converted mana cost on all the cards has to be three or less. And... Um, you start off with 25 health instead of 20 or 40. So 20 would be the regular. 40 is a commander for a free-for-all. So, I may look into building a deck like that, um, and see how it goes. And I've recently built a couple of new commander decks. One specifically was, um, Anna Fenza the Foremost is the commander. She is a three-color, um, commander, which is black, white, and green. And basically her ability is, when she attacks you can target another tapped creature and put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So it's kind of based around 1-1 one -one counters and putting stuff on creatures and just getting... And then um, there was one of the sets that recently came out that had the Outlast ability, where it's like any creature with a 1-1 one -one counter on it gets this additional ability, like First Strike or Lifelink or Death Touch or Reach or Flying or whatever else. So... Um, it plays pretty well a lot of the time, so I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, um, happy with it. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is because like I have this urge to go back and make like a spike modular uh, rafting deck. Like, Ooh. like just just because it'd be funny, not because it would be effective in any way. Um, That's sort of the point, though, right? Like, in, I mean, I know there's some people out there that just love playing Magic just for the purpose of, like, oh, I'm going to make the best deck ever, and it's just going to wreck face, right? No, wait, like, why do that? What's the point? That's my that's my opinion. It's just, like, I like making stuff that's kind of weird and funky, that's kind of got, like, a theme going on, and that's a little bit challenging to play, but it's still effective. Yeah, and, and despite all our marital issues... Um... I think that's part of the thing that we have in common in gaming is that we like to play to play and we're not necessarily like cutthroat killers. Yeah. Um, which is fine. Like, cause like I can play up if I need to, but usually that takes a little bit of prep time and practice because yeah. the people who play like that already have that. Cause exactly. my life just doesn't lend to that very well. Uh -huh. Um, so anything else going on in the magic world for you? Um, I also have a... I've been waiting on some cards to come in the mail. I got lost and something or another. But uh, my other EDH deck that I built was a, the commander's Jor Kadeen. He is a red-white commander, and he has Metalcraft. And so it's basically loosely based around um, artifacts and equipments and creatures that... Um, you know, either have, like, trample or flying or something like that. 
<laughs> Sorry, you lost. You, you legitimately lost me in the middle of explaining my answer to my question because I was just like, and eh, don't care. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> and I'm checking out. This is just me asking you so that. No, no, because no, I want you to talk it about it. And I think we are going to change talk it. Talk about think, it. And I, mean, <laughs> I think you had a good idea there. I think if we do like a little logo thing for it, we'll just change scene. And uh, we'll have Sid's mid uh, Men in Magic, and we can do, like, uh, a thing where you're big, and then it's just my voice annoying you for the future. Sure. So, yeah, I, so just, it's, I just like the idea of, like, continuing to work on things like this, because... Yeah. It's uh, always a work in progress. Always improving, moving forward. Yeah, and in theory, I like should be sitting forward like this instead of back. But, yeah, uh, I should probably be sitting No, you're, you're fine. You're framed really well. It's just compared to, like, me, because, like, I'm all the way back based on this. Because I'm on a new desk, too. That's so hot. I can't thank you enough for that. Um, oh, yeah, look. I took a camcorder part. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it didn't it's work beforehand. Fancy. I was trying to fix it. Anyways. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I'm just on a new setup, new place, new everything, so I'm trying to see what works, and we'll, we'll get around to that. But, uh, real quick, in, in uh, Minecraft, uh, yes. By all means, come out and play htkb.dndns.org. Um, the big rules, don't be a dick. Uh, the main one, if you go to uh, slash minecraft.php um, for my site, it has everything you need to get online there. Uh, if you want a more recent one, you can go to the 25566 port and play there and annoy those people. Because uh, I don't really play on that one, but uh, so it's really just been me, and with the with the move and everything, the server's been down, or essentially down, uh, for the most part. So it's really just been me and a couple of people testing it for me, uh, and the kids popped on there, and that was fun to play with them. But we got distracted with Cube World because uh, oh. I loaded that up on a bunch of computers, and it was so funny because I had at my friend's house we had. Um, so the server was there. We had the Surface on uh, attached to a TV. We had two desktops running, and then we had my living room desktop running. Uh, and it just—it was so funny because it was me and like four or five kids all playing around on the on the Cube World server together. Uh, and we were just like, let's run as far as we can this way and see if we can find a new place. Because we kept trying to go to like dungeons and fight stuff and. Uh, Wow, does that game build teamwork? Um, but it's really if you throw enough people at it, uh, most of your problems go away. Uh, is really what it comes down to. Um, I don't know if you've played Cube World before. But we can definitely make that happen. No, I have not. And so, like, it's a it's a voxel adventure game. It's essentially Minecraft, but in a three D perspective. With uh, no craft, no building blocks. Oh, so you I see. just run around and fight and stuff. Because um, it's still it's still an alpha. Um, oh. But they're still working on it. So okay. Who knows when we'll actually get that game? No Man's Sky will probably come out before uh, Cube World officially launches. Boom. All at, right. At this point, so many other people have taken their idea and done it better that they're gonna have yeah. to come out with something special to really add the punch in. Hmm. Um, That's too bad. So mobile gaming. Say, have you been doing any mobile gaming at all? <gasps> I I downloaded a game recently. Oh, you um, well, actually, just when I was like uh, going back and forth to California for work, and it's called Candy Crush Saga Jelly World, something like that. You know what? I I, I would be more sad that you downloaded a King dot com product. If I didn't have one to talk about, <laughs> um, not that I did it myself. I was uh, I was on the plane flying to Georgia to go get my stuff, and uh, the lady next to me happened to be playing it. And it was interesting enough that I really I, I was like, oh, what are we doing here? But uh, go ahead and talk to talk about your horrible game first, and then uh -huh. got, or you you know what? Let me start out with one, and then you can go to your horrible game. And I'll go to my horrible game. Sure. All right. So if you are in the know, then you recognize this picture. Um, I don't think, uh, Sid, you may or may not recognize what's going on there. Mm. Okay, so this is Neko Atsume, and I just 
put out more food, so there's no cats there. But it's eventually, oh. it's eventually a cat farm simulator. You Ooh. put food out, and then stray cats wander up and play with the the stuff you leave out. Or in this my sounds case, like your apartment in real life. You're so it's so mean, it's so mean. <laughs> um, so they they play with, or they lay on, or they climb in stuff that's there. And there's special cats. It's essentially Fallout Shelter, but with cats. Okay. And they don't fight anything. Oh. Um, but it's wildly popular. It was so popular that people were playing the Japanese version before it got port ported over here in America and just guessing what things were. Nice. Uh, so they're really <laughs> pushing it. I, want, I would want a more of a game management thing where like you actually watch them walk in through a crack in the fence or whatever. And then you can, like, pet them, and then they can run away or scratch you or whatever. Um, like, I would want something just more interactive. Because once they're there, you're like, oh, it's a cat! Okay, I guess I'll do something else now. Yeah. Um, and that's how Fallout Shelter felt uh, most of the time. Except it was added with occasional, fuck rad roaches! Or, oh, we set the place on fire! Yeah. <laughs> you idiots. Not <laughs> on fire. Okay, so what's your horrible king.com game? Oh boy, yeah, I just, um, you know, it's like you get to the point in Candy Crush where you can't go any farther because you have to, like, buy stuff and dumb crap like that. So you can just download one of their other games and play that until you get to the same point. And it's, it's basically the same, except the jelly version is you have to, like, you have to spread the jelly like across all of the spaces, and so you know if the you know if you have three that connect and one of them is touching a jelly, then all three of them become jellies or something like that. And there's there's a level where you kind of like compete against an AI version where it's like, you know, <laughs> they've got more colored jelly on their side and than you do, and you got to do it in so many moves and blah blah blah. It's just. You know, it's it's bored people gaming for the airplane times, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not I, a big fan of Match 3 in general. Like, Bejeweled, I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? But then <laughs> watching people rip off Bejeweled, it's just kind of like, really? And it's this <laughs> popular? Because you yeah. only do so much with Match 3. I thought Dungeon Hearts uh, was the end of the line. Because the way Dungeon Heart works is, like, you've got a party of assholes that each activate when their music lines hit because that's what the, oh. the thing looks like it looks like a music line feeding in so you've got four lines that all have buttons that you've got to like put together and when three of them match the character activates and will fight the monsters that are there. Oh. overly complicated and poorly responsive mm. um, so but it's an interesting concept so I gotta hand them to that I just hated it yeah. Um, and then what you were talking about sounds like your typical match three. Well, it turns out that I ran into a lady on a plane who was playing Blossom Blast, uh, which actually turns out it's Blossom Blast Saga. Oh, okay. So it is a King.com game. But yep. it was so intriguing that, like, I actually played a couple rounds with her, and we were talk talking strategy, and she really knew what she was doing, so she didn't need me. Mm. Um but instead of being on a grid, it's on essentially a hex. It's staggered. So you've got two, three, two. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, and then the way they generate the map is there's places where it's blocked. There's animals that will be in the way. There's gophers that will dig up and get in the way. Um, and your objective, like on some maps, is to like get rid of all the weeds. Other ones is to get... Uh, to the bottom of the map uh, in Sony, and, and you always have a move limit. So oh, okay. the way it works is you you drag over existing matches of three or more, and there's like a charge meter so you can have explosions. But essentially, what happens is when you end the wherever you end uh, will grow and it will set off everything around it. So if you're familiar with the is it just, Oh god, did I forget what it's called? Discrete mathematics. It, it's a lot of neighbor dom dominance. Mm. Um, and so that grow can set off other grows, and you can get chain reactions that'll clear the entire map. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. It's insane. And then and the explosions are like, uh, a big area will like blow up and activate everything. 
or clear most everything um, as it is. And then they have weird things like they have uh, glass that's over it, like a greenhouse. <laughs> so, like, the weed one that we got stuck on was, uh, like, half the map's under glass, and then there's weeds and a gopher at the bottom. So the gopher's going around digging up things to block you. Um, the weeds don't grow, but the glass is in the way, so you have to break the glass and then grow over the weeds. Oh. Uh, and uh, I, I really have no idea how she got as far as she did with some of that, because I tried it, and I was like, okay, okay, well, you definitely <laughs> have to stay to the middle, because I tried carv carving out one side to go over, and not only did the gopher block me, but I, ju I, I was shortening the number of things I was reacting with by being on the side. Yeah. Um, so it was a cute game. It was neat to see that, uh, like that kind of innovation actually happening. Uh, you would think with that sort of thing going on, they wouldn't have to trademark stupid fucking things. Um, it's the world we live in, man. Well, yeah, and it just it keeps fucking happening. Sony joined their ranks, trying to trademark Let's Plays, which obviously they had no right to, none whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, they have nothing that uses the word Let's Plays, uh, Rooster Teeth, and a whole company with Let's Play with a Z um, already, like, actively used the word as a brand. Uh, it's just, it was just ridiculous that they thought they could do that. Uh, even uh, uh, Greg Miller and Colin Moriar Moriarty over on um, uh, Kind of Funny Games, uh, it's the number one PlayStation podcast... <laughs> Check that out if you like PlayStation. Uh, but even they were like, that's bullshit, Sony. And they're like the, the Sony fanboys. They they like, they like know people high up on the ranks, personally. It's oh, jeez. Um, so fuck them. And fuck the fine bros while we're at it. We'll go ahead and say that. I'll say that. Because they tried to trademark uh, React. Oh, yeah. Squirrel. Um, sorry behind you. <laughs> just saw this was cat a squirrel climbing just... the fence, and it's a squirrel. Oh, yep, totally is. Yeah. Hi, buddy. <laughs> he got a little snack in his mouth, too. A snake? A little snack. Oh, snack, okay. Yeah. I was like, is a snake a snack? I guess it could be. Um, okay, so finally kind of digging in through all the, all the garbage. We're about 40 minutes in. We I just say we're like left, man. Okay, yeah. we gotta we gotta start pump, pumping through this. Yep. Uh, what have you been playing like uh, gaming wise? Like what have, have you met gaming goals recently? Um, I guess the only gaming goal that I met was just like playing something new that I hadn't played before, and that was um, playing Dominion. Um, so one of my coworkers brought in Dominion, and he's like, "This is my favorite game ever. We should all play on Fridays." And so we played, and I, that was the first time I played the deck building game. And he's got a bunch of different expansions. He's got he brings in uh, Hinterlands and Adventures and um, Intrigue. Um, I think probably one of my favorite cards. Yeah, I was just say, he's got most of them. I know there's a couple of them. I was at a game store the other day and was looking to maybe purchase another expansion to add to the, the work collection. But um, I'm pretty sure he had most of them. And then there's this whole debacle on whether alchemy was any good or, or cornucopia and guilds <laughs> and all cornucopia that. Cornucopia kind of sucks, but uh, alchemy yeah. is definitely worth it. Um, oh, okay. If, yeah, if you had my honest opinion, Alchemy's worth it. I would get Seaside, and, uh... Yeah, I think he has Seaside. Prosperity, too. I think, is the other one. Yeah. Hinterlands was... is okay. Intrigue's good. Yeah. Um, but, like, Dark Ages and, uh, Cornucopia, and what's the other one? There's another one that's just kind of mediocre. I don't know. It's over there. Yeah. Uh, they're all good. It's just some are, are better. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, I'm very familiar with deck building games. Um, like it's it's Dominion is the granddaddy of them all. Yeah. So that's been a lot of fun. And then um, when I was at the game shop, somebody's like, "Oh, you should pick up Machikoro." And I'm like, "All right, well, let me see what that is." And so I looked at it, and I was like, "Oh, sure." So I picked up Machikoro, and I got like the deluxe edition that has like the two expansions that come with it. Monte Curro is Catan if you don't want to set up the board. Oh, okay. That's essentially it, what it is. It's a tableau is it, builder 
Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. You had a question. Oh, I was gonna, is it like less aggressive than Catan? Like no. less enemy making, or is it just about as bad? It looks less aggressive, but I guarantee you, it's not. It's very much about outscoring the other person because. On a board, you can build, outbuild people and manipulate the board. You don't have that option in, ten of, in Machi Koro, but you can do dickish things uh, to the other players. Oh, okay. Um, but it all comes down to your dice rolls. It's like, did you oh. buy the things that are going to uh, happen when the dice gets rolled? Like, so you come down to two, like one of two strategies. You either bank big on certain numbers... Um, which a lot of people do and to great success, or you spread evenly, which Machi Kuro, it's harder to do than Catan because the cards are uh, very specific in what they do. Uh oh. Now, you have two expansions. I've only played with the base set, so the expansions okay. may actually fix that. Um, and there's actually a Machi Kuro box in the shot right above Pan. Uh, is it not there? Above Pandemic. I don't think I, I don't think I see it. Oh, pandemic! I'd heard somebody talking about oh, that. Was that one any good? Um, yeah, I've got a Machikura box, but that's where I keep guillotine now. Oh. Because <laughs> it was actually a a tournament box, special box or something. Um, uh. So real quick, uh, I, I I played some XCOM. I, I was watching Mark Gardner play it on the Weird Lanes, and I I was like, oh, I want to play it again. So I started playing on. Uh, Classic. The original XCOM? Yeah, or XCOM uh, Enemy Within. Oh, yeah. It's not, the original is even older. Yeah, um, sure. But XCOM 2 is out now, so it's worth the distinction. Yeah. Um, and he's playing that over there uh, now. But uh, I, I started playing on Classic because I wanted because uh, I thought I could handle it. I But I played on Iron Man, and I definitely couldn't. So I went into training, and I uh, every time I lose somebody, I start over. Uh, oh, so eventually yeah. I'll be able, I'll be good enough to get through missions without losing people. And occasionally you lose people. It's part of the point of the game. So it's not that I'm afraid to lose people, but I was getting depressed. Uh, I think I actually put some uh, some videos up. Uh, Did you make me? Am I one of your people? No, I was trying. I was using the weird lanes for a little bit. I was like, oh, I killed them all. They're all dead. Um, so it would kill me to have you die. You know, but I will be uh, when I get XCOM 2 and I spend 60 hours in character creation. You will definitely be uh, one of the soldiers. Oh goody, I'm excited. Um, I know, I'm trying to decide if I want to buy it too because I've been watching some gameplay on that as well and it looks really interesting. Yeah, I just, I've got so many games that it's hard to justify buying new games even though occasionally we find good deals on stuff. Uh, and of course if we're going to use it as a uh, something to play together then I'm all for it, but XCOM's uh, a little hard to play with people unless you're fighting each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but real quick, uh, I played some Code Names, Ticket to Ride, uh, and Star I played some Star Realms last night. Um, Ticket to Ride, I think you and I have both played that before. Yeah! Uh, it's trains on a map, and you build across the, the country and earn points. So, I haven't played that in forever! I'm gonna play. We can do that. Star Realms, uh, is a deck building game kind of similar to Dominion, except you have life points like you do in Magic, and you're trying to, uh, shoot each other out of the sky. Oh, okay. That's the shortest possible version I can give you. Um, Code Names is a very interesting thing where you have a grid of words, and your job is to try to communicate to the other person uh, that which ones they should get based on a key that you have. So, you, but you only get uh. one word and a number. So you can say uh, dirt two, and they might pick earth and worm um, out of the, the selections there. Okay, okay. Uh, so you got to be really choosy because there are things that will end the turn or end the game. Um, and Mini Metro is a great little game to, to throw. I really wish I had it on, uh, like, iOS or something. But uh, if I just want to relax for a minute and play a game and then drop it, Mini Metro is where it's at. FTL is a good one, too, because I have been doing that on occasion. Um, but Mini Metro is you manage train stations, and, and people want to go... To these places and it's represented all in shapes so it's literally you have shapes and you draw lines between the shapes and the little trains take people around um, it's super interesting it's a super super simplistic game but it's actually uh, pretty complicated or complex um, running 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 uh, I wanted to talk about we talked about trademarks really quickly um, I bought some new stuff uh, 
Battlestar Galactica already lost a piece. I gotta find a way to order a replacement piece because fuck <laughs> me. Um, well, no, like in, during the move. Uh, no, I was filming the damn unboxing for it. I dropped it in the store I was at, and I don't think I went and picked it up. Oh no! Yeah, so I'm an idiot. Um, Thunderstone, Heart of Doom. Warning to anyone who buys that package or finds one that's left. It is missing randomizer cards uh, that are kind of important to Thunderstone. You have to get the, the pack from the store um, or find a way to contact Alderac, and that's what I'm working on. Is Alderac, is that them? I don't know, I've got to do that. And I have to contact Japanime Games because I got my big box. Uh, oh, you can't see it, it's up there. Um, I got my oh, yep. big box for Tano Curry, um, and uh, I the original set is missing cards like drastically like I've got like 10 uh, of, e of two private maids and then I've got like three or four event cards when I should have like 20 event cards overall uh, oh. it's really it's really ridiculous um, uh, I'd like to play some Minecraft Battlestar Galacta Ninja All Stars which I also got in which is with this giant black boxes um, that's what these ninjas are from that I was playing. Oh. Um, and then uh, Tabletop Simulator. I want to get my uh, Super Dungeon Explore Forgotten King mod out there. I just have to arrange it. It's all done. I just have to arrange it. It's been done for two months. i got to arrange it so that it's it's viable once you open it up. Um, Star Realms I want to pick up for board gaming, not board gaming. Maybe we could do that for Ticket Ride. That would be fun. Um, and then uh, Fighties. And then I think we were talking about doing Left 4 Dead for gaming together. Yeah, I know. We, I picked up Fighties, so I do have that now. So if that was something where I think we we're, I think we we're talking about like if we we're limited on time that we could do something like that real quick before play spot or whatever. Just yeah, because Fighties is just beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, uh, I wish it was more. I, I hope maybe there's a co-op thing that we could do for a campaign. That would be awesome. That would be cool. I like being on your team more than I like being against. You. <laughs> um, I agree. But uh. I think like board games and stuff. So maybe we can do some board gaming, not not board gaming together, as well. Yeah, um, I'd be done for that. I, I don't know if we we've had this discussion or not, uh, but gaming together is supposed to be like video games, board gaming. It's going to be digital board games. Yeah. Um, anything you want to finish up the show with? Uh, no, I think that's it. I forgot that I played Carcassonne too, but that. Oh, how'd you, know. you like that? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Were you any good? Mm. I'm horrible yeah. at that game, so it's fine. I started out really well. Like, I got quite a few points, like, to kind of begin with, but, like, once it all ended, it did not work out too well for me. Kitty's like, let me dance to make you feel better about it. <laughs> but I've got Carcassonne on the iPad, um, so I, I, that's where I play it, typically. Um, nice. I, it's embarrassing to play with people at this point. <laughs> um, but that is going to be a hard show. Go ahead and check over to Weirdling Talk... Uh, not weirdlings.com, but check them out too. Uh, YouTube.com slash uh, the weirdlings or Twitch.tv slash weirdlings for Legion, Legend of Esland. Uh, it's going to start being right after this podcast ends uh, about now. Uh, Sid has been my lovely, lovely guest. Um, thank you for coming on, Sid. Thanks for having me. Um, and hopefully we'll have her around some more. We'll have other people on at some points. But this is a regular thing. I am Camerai. And, that's... and I'm Sid Cam. Oh, yeah. Yep, sorry. Yeah, that's that. game okay. over. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm so sorry. That's cool. <laughs> if you want to see anything else we're up to, go to click the annotations and it'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.